Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Continuing our physiology playlist, we're talking about gastrointestinal physiology. In previous videos, we talked about mastication, salivation, deglutition, gastric motility, gastric secretions, intestinal motility and intestinal secretions. We talked about the exocrine and the endocrine pancreas. Today, it's time for the liver, the gallbladder, bile acids, and bile salts, and how these doozies will help emulsify and therefore digest and therefore absorb fat. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. The functions of your liver are numerous, metabolism, detoxification, synthesis of plasma protein, and much more. To keep it simple, your liver makes good stuff and excretes bad stuff. What's the good stuff? Bile acids and bile salt. Why are they good? Because they help you emulsify and therefore absorb lipids. What's the bad stuff? Bilirubin. Why is it bad? It's the waste product of red blood cell destruction. Bilirubin and jaundice are the topics of the next video. Why did we call it bilirubin? Bili because in the bile, rubra means red because it's the destruction of red blood cells. But today we will focus on the good stuff, bile acids and bile salts. Actually, the bile is way more than two things. It has bile acids, bile salt, it has proteins, it has water and electrolytes, it has cholesterol, it has the conjugated bilirubin, as we'll talk in the next video. It has bicarbonate to neutralize the gastric acidity, because bicarbonate is basic, but your stomach secretes HCl, which is an acid. And the very important lecithin, which is a phospholipid. You know what? Suppose that I have too much cholesterol production but I do not have enough lecithin and I do not have enough bile acids and bile salts. This combination will increase my risk of developing cholesterol yellow gallstones. But first, the anatomy. Here is your liver, right lobe, left lobe. The right lobe will give us the right hepatic duct. The left lobe will give us the left hepatic duct. They will join each other to give you the common hepatic duct. The common hepatic duct plus the cystic duct equals the common bile duct. The common bile duct with the main pancreatic duct will open at the ampulla of water into the posteromedial aspect of the second part of the duodenum. If you want to absorb fat, the pancreas will contribute its enzyme known as pancreatic lipase and the bile will contribute bile acids and bile salts Together, they are the duo that will destroy, break down, and emulsify fat. When you digest fat, you'll be able to absorb fat. But suppose that I have a problem in the liver, or a problem in the biliary system, or a problem in the pancreas, or a problem in the intestine. Do you think I'll be able to absorb fat? No. What will I get? Fat malabsorption, a condition known as steatorrhea. More on that later in this video. Back to basics, good stuff, bile acids and bile salts, bad stuff, bilirubin, both of which are present in your bile. The bile is made by your hepatocytes in the liver, the bile is stored in the gallbladder, ready for you. Once you eat a fatty meal, tons of bile will be dished out of this gallbladder phew, into the intestine to help you digest and emulsify. The liver and the gallbladder. What will stimulate the hepatocytes formation of bile? The vagus nerve, because remember, the parasympathetic nervous system is the friend of the gastrointestinal system. It's the friend of digestion and absorption. Vagus will boost bile production. Cholerectics is a class of medications in pharmacology that will also boost bile production from the liver. Okay. However, we can also talk to the storage unit. CCK is a lovely GI hormone, can squeeze this gallbladder to get the bile out and into the duodenum. Why do we call it cholecystokinin? Kine from kinetic is to move. Choli means bile. Cyst is the cyst that has the bile, i.e. the gallbladder. The gallbladder is also known as the cholecyst. If you want more bile, CCK is your friend. If you want more water and bicarbonate in the bile, secretin is your friend. Some basic pharmacology, drug metabolism, i.e. biotransformation which happens in the liver. 
It's part of pharmacokinetics because once the drug enters your body, it has to be absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and eventually eliminated or excreted. We're talking about metabolism. Metabolism has two phases, phase one and guess what? Phase two. Phase one is modification. Phase two is conjugation. Both of them are implicated in making bilirubin. More on that in the next video. And conjugation is important to make bile salts. In the English language, to conjugate is to join, to join something with something else. This something else could be acetyl group, methyl group, or it could be glucuronic acid. Back to basic chemistry. Here is an acid, okay? Here is an electrolyte. Join them together, now we have a salt. Similarly, here are bile acids. Conjugate them with something else, then you get bile salts. It makes perfect sense. In reality, it's a little more complex than this. We will conjugate them with something else and we will add sodium or potassium. Okay, same thing. Bile salts. What are bile salts? They are conjugated bile acids. What type of bile acid? We have two types of bile acid, primary and guess what? Secondary. Which one was made first? Of course, primary bile acid. Made by whom? By the liver. From what raw material? From cholesterol. That's why we say cholecystokinin. That's why we say cholecyst, cholecystitis, cholecystitis, etc., etc. Choly refers to bile because it came from cholesterol. What are these lovely primary bile acids made in the liver from cholesterol? Enters cholic acid and kindeoxycholic acid. So these are bile acids? Yeah i.e. acids in the bile that's true now let's conjugate them when you conjugate them they become bile salts so the definition of bile salts is conjugated primary bile acid who made them also the liver conjugate means to join to join what with what to join the bile acids with something else could be glycine or taurine Hashtag conjugation. You can take this lovely primary bile acid and conjugate it with glycine to give me what? Colic plus glycine equals glycocolic acid. Amazing. You can add sodium to this and it will be called sodium glycocholate. Dang, that was clean. Or you can conjugate the colic acid with taurine, giving you taurocholic acid. Add sodium to it sodium taurocholate or taurocholate sodium whatever who cares these chemistry professors complicate stuff for no reason or you can take the other bile acid kinodeoxycholic acid and conjugate with glycine equals glycokindeoxycholic acid dead gummit or you can take the same primary bile acid kindeoxycholic acid and conjugate it with taurine to give you taurokindeoxycholic acid who named these things but don't be so scared about the name this is basically an acid uh, made by cholesterol and it has glycine in it how's that hard so in order this is what happens primary bile acids are made in the liver then you conjugate them with glycine or taurine to give you bile salts we're still in the liver then we will push that bile into the duodenum amazing the bacteria in your gut will transform the bile salts into secondary bile acids Okay, medicosis, what are secondary bile acids then? They are made from primary bile acids. No kidding! By the bacteria in your intestines. Cholic acid was the primary. Amen. It will become deoxycholic acid. And the candeoxycholic acid will become lithocholic acid. Litho, lithocin, phospholipids, get the point. So to recap, your liver will make primary bile acids and then will conjugate them to bile salts, which are even better. And then the bile salts by the bacteria will become secondary bile acids. Because these are the good guys, unlike bilirubin, who is the bad guy, we need these good guys to come back to the liver. And the intestine will do exactly this. The intestine will give you back your lovely bile acids to the liver to recycle them. Hashtag the enterohepatic circulation. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Bile acids and bile salts are important for fat emulsification. 
When you eat fat, you're eating the big stuff, the macromolecules. And then the job of your gut, the job of your digestion is to break down the big stuff, macromolecules, into small stuff, micromolecules, such as free fatty acids and monoglycerides, diglycerides, etc. Why do I need to break down the big stuff into small stuff? First of all, because the big stuff is too big to be absorbed. Absorption is passage through a membrane. The big stuff cannot pass through the membranes in the microvilli, in the villi that line your small intestine. You need to break it down into micromolecules. And then once you absorb the micromolecules into the bloodstream, they will help you make all kinds of biochemical reactions. And the TCA cycle will give you all kinds of ATP. And the electron transport chain will also contribute to ATP formation. We're talking energy here. Oh, that's why I eat. Great. What kind of fats are you eating? Could be triglycerides, cholesterol, essential fatty acids, lipid-soluble vitamins are also fat-soluble. Don't forget that fats provide 9 kilocalories per gram. Oh, by the way, when you read the label of the food that you're eating, when they say calories, they mean kilocalories, to be technical. Because calorie has a scientific definition. It goes like this. One calorie is a unit of energy equivalent to the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Do you remember my video on the pancreas? Yeah. We had exocrine pancreas and endocrine pancreas. Enzymes versus hormones. Let's talk about the pancreatic enzymes. Some of them will help you digest carbs. Some of them will help you digest proteins. And today's topic, some of them will help you digest fats, such as lipase, colipase, phospholipase, and cholesterol esterase. Secretin will tell your pancreas and your biliary system to produce lots of water and bicarbonate to neutralize the acidity that's being dumped upon us from the stomach. But cholecystokine in pancreasimin, or simply CCK, is a different GI hormone. It goes to your pancreas and to your biliary system but it tells them to give me enzymes and bile, rich in bile salts, rich in digestive enzymes, not rich in water and bicarbonate. So secretin will tell these organs to give me water and bicarbonate. Cholecystokine in pancreasimin will tell these organs to give me enzymes and bile salts. But hey, medicosis, why do you call it cholecystokinin? I-N because it's protein or peptide in nature. Kinetic means to move, to move something. To move what? The gallbladder, the cholecyst, the cyst, the sac that houses the bile. Why do you call it pancreasimin? I-N because it's a peptide or a protein. Zyme because it tells the pancreas to secrete digestive enzymes. There you have it. Medicine is so beautiful, if explained properly. Unlike your doofus professor with his PowerPoints. The enzyme is important for fat digestion because it will give you lipase, colipase, cholesterol esterase, and phospholipase. Lipase and colipase will break down the lipids, cholesterol esterase will break down cholesterol, and phospholipase will break down the phospholipids in your diet. So the exocrine pancreas is for chemical digestion, but the bile is for mechanical digestion. What do you mean by that? I mean emulsification, increasing the surface area of the fat so that the pancreatic enzymes can act upon them. That's why I'm a big fan of bile acids and bile salts. So here is fat. The mouth has lingual lipase. Your stomach has lipase. Your intestine might have a very tiny amount of lipase. Your pancreas has all kinds of lipid digesting enzymes, such as lipase, colipase, phospholipase, cholesterol esterase. There is the pilot and the co-pilot. Then the bile has bile acids and bile salts, which will help you make micelles and then package them into chylomicrones and then absorb them to your blood when they are lovely micromolecules, such as free fatty acids and two monoacylglycerols. Here is a sandwich that contains lots of fat. This fat will reach the duodenum. The pancreas will dish out the enzymes and your liver slash gallbladder will dish out the bile. The pancreas is providing the enzymes, lipase, colipase, cholesterol, esterase, phospholipase, etc., and the bile is providing the bile salts. What do they do? They increase the surface area of the lipids, making it easier for lipase and colipase to have access to the inside of these lipid molecules. 
This is called mycelial formation. The mycelial looks like a flower with the fat soluble hidden in the middle and the water soluble on the outside. Why do you put the water soluble on the outside? Because your gut is full of water. Duh! So we gotta put the water soluble, the proteins, near the water. After this, package them into chylomicrons. They will go to the interstitium to the lymph capillaries known as lacteals and then from lacteals to other lymph capillaries, and then to bigger lymph vessels, and then we'll dump them to the veins. The veins will take you to the right atrium of your heart. The function of the lymph vessels and the lymph nodes is to clean out this fat from any toxin. This also helps train your immune cells. Lymph and chyle are not exactly the same, there is a tiny difference. Inside the lacteals of the villi that line your small intestine, we have chyle, which is more dense than the lymph, which makes sense because you just ate a dense fatty meal. Okay, medicosis, now I understand that the micromolecules of fat digestion will end up in the lacteal and go to the lymph. How about the carbohydrates and proteins product of digestion? Will they go to the lymph? No, they go to blood vessels, not lymph vessels. Big difference. So I know that these uh, lacteals will end up in uh, lymph vessels, which will end up in the thoracic duct. How about these blood vessels? They will end up in the portal vein, which will end up in the liver. Quick hint, in order for you to absorb fat and fat-soluble vitamins, you need three organs to be healthy. Number one, the liver and biliary system. Number two, the exocrine pancreas. Number three, the gut itself, because this is where absorption happens. What if I have a problem in my liver or biliary system, or I have a problem with my exocrine pancreas, or I have a problem in my intestine, what's gonna happen? You'll get fat malabsorption. It's not just malabsorption of fat, also malabsorption of fat-soluble vitamins. Now let's talk about mycelles. Mycelles result from emulsification of fat into small droplets. The lovely bile acids and bile salts will help us make the mycelles, the flower-like structure. If you're fat with nonpolar hydrocarbons, it means you're not water soluble so we will hide you in the middle far away from the water that is surrounding us in the fluid of the intestine but if you are water soluble we'll put you on the outside facing the water it's the story of the nonpolar versus the polar and when you have a double nature like an amphibian what do you call you amphipathic an amphibian is an organism that can live on sea and on land an amphipathic structure is a structure that has two faces two sides to the same coin we have a water soluble face and a lipid soluble face these mycelles will help the lipid float inside the water because we are hiding the lipid on the inside which is not in contact with the outside water so we will cruise all over the intestine until we can get absorbed. Package me into bigger packages known as chylomicrons. Notice the word chylomicrons because chyle is in the lacteals that will absorb you. Okay, medicosis, but how were bile salts able to do this thing? The water-soluble versus lipid-soluble? Well, 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 let's dig deeper. Here's the chemical structure of a bile acid, for example. Look at these hydroxyl groups. Oh yeah, here is one, here is two, here is three. These hydroxyl groups are water-soluble. However, we also have some methyl groups here and here. These methyl groups are hydrophobic. These lovely rings are not two-dimensionals. They are three-dimensionals. If you are hydrophilic, you will lie above the plane in the alpha orientation. But if you are lipid soluble, you lie below the plane in the three-dimensional structure. Alpha orientation versus beta orientation. That's why they are able to make myoseals with water soluble on the outside, yet lipid soluble on the inside. Because they are amphibathic. Because they have some water soluble groups and some lipid soluble groups. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. What's the pKa of bile acids? About 6, which is close enough to your blood pH, which is about 7.4. Which means they are present in this state, some water-soluble and some lipid-soluble. But wait until we add glycine and taurine to them. Hashtag conjugation, hashtag bile salts. The pKa decrease even further. So instead of 6, let's call it 5 or 4. 
Now, the difference between the pKa of the pile salt and the pH of your intestinal fluid will widen and increase dramatically. This will help this structure become fully ionized, i.e. more leaning towards the OH, which means we're better able at hiding the fat on the inside of the mycel. That's why bile salts are even better than bile acids at the task of emulsification of fat. Remember that the bile acids came from cholesterol. What's the key enzyme? Cholesterol 7-alpha-hydroxylase. You need to memorize this. What if for some reason I have too much cholesterol? What's going to happen? Well, you are before the arrow, so you will tell the arrow to move faster so that we can go in this direction. So high cholesterol will stimulate the cholesterol 7-alpha-hydroxylase enzyme. Conversely, the product of the reaction, the bile acids, their accumulation will actually inhibit the enzyme 7-alpha-hydroxylase. Because we already have too much bile acids, we do not need to make more. Here is the entire story in a nutshell. Your gut lumen is full of water, yet lipids are hydrophobic, which means they hate water. These fats will lump together in fat globules. These are very large and your lovely lipase will be unable to access them in order to digest them. Enters the bile salts, they emulsify them. Instead of fat globules, now you have tiny molecules known as emulsion droplets. Love it. Now the lipase and colipase will access, actually the colipase will grant the access of the lipase to the molecules, and then we will break down the big fats into small fats. Hide the fat on the inside and the water soluble on the outside. Hashtag my seal. Package me into bigger packages. Chylomicrones. The chyle will be in the chyle inside the lacteal in the villi of your intestine. And then you'll go to lymph vessels, to the thoracic duct, to big veins, to the right atrium. Do you recall this mnemonic? Yeah, we said that first we absorb iron in the duodenum, then folate in the jejunum, and then cobalamin in the terminal ileum. But it was not just vitamin B12. There is also bile salts absorbed in the terminal ileum. This is the story of the enterohepatic circulation. And there you have it. Since the bile acids and bile salts are the good guys, they are so valuable. You do not want to waste them in your poop. That's why 95% is their recycling rate. 95% will go back to the liver, from the intestine to the liver, from the intestine entero to the liver, hepatic circulation. How about the remaining 5%? You will poop them out, which by the way, could be a good thing if you have excessive cholesterol floating around, because this will help you get rid of 5% cholesterol. But hypnicosis, can I dish out more cholesterol? Yes, you can do it by eating more fibers or by taking a bile acid sequestrant medication known as the bile acid resin cholestyramine. Notice that the word choli always comes back. To the clinic. You know that you have bile acids and bile salts and bilirubin and cholesterol. All of them are in the bile. But if you have too much cholesterol, but too little bile acids and too little phosphatidylcholine, you might suffer from excessive precipitation of cholesterol, hashtag yellow cholesterol gallstones. Gallstones could have two different colors, the yellow because they are full of cholesterol, or the pigmented because they are full of bilirubin. If I am morbidly obese and full of estrogen, which comes from cholesterol, I am at a higher risk of cholesterol stones. That's why they are more common in females. However, if I have a hemolytic anemia, could be sickle cell or thalassemia, I will destroy many red blood cells, releasing tons of bilirubin, causing pigmented gallstones. Regardless of the type of the stone, if this gallstone gets stuck here at the cystic duct, which is the duct of the cholecyst, you will have a cholecystitis inflammation of the gallbladder because the stone is stuck at the cystic duct. To learn more about cholecystitis, please watch my dedicated video titled Cholecystitis. Here is another miscellaneous topic. Your blood. Oh yeah, I know it. It's made of plasma and cells. The plasma is water and proteins. The proteins are albumin and globulin. Ever wondered who made albumin globulin? Your liver. But what if I lost my liver? Cirrhosis is fibrosis of the liver with liver cell failure. Your liver is toast. 
therefore you'll be unable to make albumin your oncotic pressure will drop fluid will start oozing out of your vessel and will pile up in the interstitial space causing edema could be in the ankle could be in the presacral area could be in your belly called ascites etc moreover you're not making globulin the beta globulins are important for coagulation without them you'll bleed the gamma globulins are the antibodies without them you get infections moreover when you lost your liver you lost your ability to conjugate and excrete bilirubin and that's why you'll develop jaundice because bilirubin is a yellowish brownish pigment that will be the topic of the next video moreover if you lost your liver and your biliary system or you, you lost your exocrine pancreas or you lost your intestine you will be unable to absorb fat the fat will be malabsorbed not just the fat but the fat soluble vitamins as well when you lose vitamin k you get bleeding when you lose vitamin e you get anemia and neurological symptoms when you lose vitamin d you get bone problems when you lose vitamin a you get vision problems such as nyctalopia or night blindness Okay, Medicosis, what's going to happen to all of this fat that I fail to digest and fail to absorb? It's going to end up in your poop. Lots of fat in your poop. You'll be cramping, bloating all day long. Farting like mad. Forgive my language. I mean, passing lots of flatus. That's more professional. Your stool is greasy, shiny, rich, foul-smelling, and it floats on the surface of water in the toilet bowl. And instead of this normal stool, you have this ugly greasy stool it stinks why do you call it steatorrhea steato means fat rhea means river like rio de janeiro so you have a river of fatty stool hashtag diarrhea that's why we call it steatorrhea diarrhea from your ears autorrhea from your nose rhinorrhea from the genitalia menorrhea on the exam question, they always trick you because students have no problem memorizing this, but they always forget the bleeding. They forget the bone problems. They forget the night vision problems. So the question could be like this. A patient came to you with abdominal pain, difficulty driving at night, bone fractures, elevated PT and PTT, and students will have no idea what's happening. It's teatoria. Just remember the vitamins. You need a good liver, a good exocrine pancreas, and a good intestine to digest and absorb fat. Therefore, what are the causes of malabsorption of fat and fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin K, E, D, and A? It could be a problem in the liver, such as biliary atresia, primary biliary cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, familial intrahepatic cholestasis, cirrhosis, etc. Could be a problem in your exocrine pancreas, cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, etc. Could be a problem in your gut, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, short bowel syndrome, etc. Whatever the cause might be, the end result is the same. Malabsorption of fat, steatorrhea, foul-smelling greasy stool that stinks and floats, and malabsorption of the fat-soluble vitamins, leading to bleeding, anemia, neurological symptoms, anisocytosis, rickets or osteomalacia, nectalopia. Remember the interhepatic circulation? Yeah. What if I want to dish out more than 5% of cholesterol in the stool? Well, you can do it via dietary fibers or you can do it with the bile acid resin known as cholestyramine. If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course, which you can download today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you want to learn more about other liver disorders, download my surgery high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.